we just recently published this, and and uh, this was a, a work of a PhD student, and 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 she was very proud of this. So am I. <laughs> the the uh, CBP alpha gene encodes a, a, a transcription factor, which is very important for the generation of myeloid cells, such as granulocytes or macrophages. And it's central to the pathology of many types of AML as ex because its expression is very often repressed by different means. For example, in the TA21, where you have Ranks Juanito, that is a, is, this, this oncofusion protein is a strong repressor of this gene. Yeah? And there are other ways of, 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 uh, of repressing it or, or crippling it in its activity. And one way of crippling this activity is, of course, mutating the gene. And in the CBP alpha double mutant AML, that this is the one that we studied, uh, this gene is mutated twice. It has an N-terminal mutation that's truncated and a C-terminal mutation that cannot bind to DNA, and, and the, the protein has trouble dimerizing because CVP proteins are loosened zipper proteins, and they actually work as, as dimers. Um, however, so the, so the, the C-terminal mutation cannot bind to DNA. And we determined the gene regulatory network for this type of AML using the methodology that we published before. And uh, 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 and uh, in in spite of CBP alpha being mutated, CBP proteins still form an important part of this network, and that was puzzling. Because if you have a protein, you have a gene that's defect. Do you know why is it an important part of this network? So so we were wondering about this, and the other feature of this type of AML is that it actually has a better uh, prognosis than other subtypes. So why is that? So the explanation for that finding was actually that these crippled proteins can still bind to DNA, but they appear they appear to be to require the assistance of other proteins to do so. And this could, of course, stabilize the gene regulatory network and allow some myeloid differentiation. And that improves prognosis, of course. But moreover, one of these proteins that is required is RUNX1. So if we deplete RUNX1 and knock it down, um, the cells, uh, the leukemic cells stop growing specifically. Normal cells don't do that, but leukemic cells do. And that points to a potential therapeutic avenue that we could use in order to, to, to treat this type of leukemia. RUNX1 appears to be very important for all kinds different types of leukemia. And maybe for that reason, because it cooperates with so many different proteins, that the uh, that, that that it's if you take it away, then the leukemia is non-viable. Yeah? So watch this space. <laughs>